All right, all right, all right. What is up, GSD fam? Um, as you guys know, you may have seen the topics. You probably got an email alert to show up here live and learn a thing or two. And we're going to be talking with Mr. Ron right here, and I'll let him introduce himself in just one second. Um, what's interesting about Ron is is how we met a long time ago, sometime last year, through a master class of some sort. Um, and I still remember the conversation. I actually remember where I was sitting when we first spoke as well. Um, and, and we've come a really, really long way um, into where we are from last year to today. And we're going to be talking about one of the bigger projects, like the 55K uh, project that he's closed. And before we actually even went live, he's talking about another deal that he's closing and he's carved out his niche into some specific service. Um, and it's also after going after another niche, but attracting other people, which is pretty beautiful um, because it just goes to show that you can demonstrate authority by being consistent and you never know what's going to come and fall in your lap. But the key was consistency. Now, for those of you guys that don't know who I am or who Cody is, Cody's my partner. He is not here just yet. He may pop in or not, uh, but I'm Rahul. I'm part of the GSD Founder Group, and we help coaches, consultants, marketing agencies really build a sustainable business from crafting their offers to scaling their traffic to creating a sales process and then bringing in people with the right standard operating procedures, not only to help with lead gen and follow-ups and all that stuff that's just so much work to do in a, in a day for one person, but also with delivery and fulfillment. So it's kind of that 360 degree view of what we've done over the last 20 plus years. So with that being said, welcome to the live hashtag live. If you're here, hashtag replay, feel free to tag a friend that you want to see this, your setter, your salesperson, whomever. Welcome Ron. Thanks for being on here. Why don't you kind of give a little bit of a background about yourself? Well, um, my name is Ron Lewis. Uh, about, in fact, almost exactly a year ago, I started my own digital marketing agency called Blue Rhino Agency. Uh, I have about 27 years of sales and marketing experience. Uh, way back when I started with a generic pharmaceutical distributor when they were a, a relatively new company and I was a highly integral part of their growth, everything from coming up with all sorts of plans to developing, uh, almost half of the sales force and turning us into by the time that I left in 2010, uh, one of the, or not one of the largest generic pharmaceutical distributor in the country. Um, so they were doing, I think, 4.3 billion. Right. Uh, and then uh, 2010 started, um, started working for myself uh, and brought in some partners a few years after that. Uh, started handling the marketing, uh, creating various different campaigns, uh, websites. Uh, I love building websites. I, I've probably built about 25 of them in my life. Um, and uh, which uh, in 2019, before right as COVID was starting, I was heavily involved in uh, the COVID PPE race trying to. Right. I remember that conversation. Yeah. yeah. So huge That's order. how we started the conversation. I think yeah. when we first spoke was about PPE. We kind of had that similar common ground, but I wasn't as into it as you were. I just knew people that knew people that knew people like probably everybody else out there. For um, sure. Yeah. So, so it was an interesting conversation. Yeah. But, so but yeah, I, I remember, but go ahead. I was going to say as, as that wound down, uh, I decided to get into digital marketing because it's something I enjoy. And uh, boy, did I have a lot to learn. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I went into it pretty blind outside of building very basic websites for myself. Um, and you guys were eye-opening right from the start. And, uh, you know, took a while to get the ball rolling, but, you know, consistency. Yeah. I mean, it, it's interesting that you mentioned like your background. You went into business for yourself in 2010. And then just a year ago, I didn't even realize you started the agency just a year ago. Um, so that's actually more impressive for, for everybody else who's out there that's paying attention and listening. By the way, if you are here, hashtag live, hashtag replay, smash the buttons. We're going to be giving away, we're not giving away, but sharing some gold. We're not going to give you gold. We're going to share some gold. So we want to teach people how to fish, not actually feed them the fish so you can survive in any market, especially what's coming upon us. We are going to probably see a recession and we want to recession proof our businesses. No, because when when real businesses thrive, it's in down markets. That's obviously no secret. 
but it may be a secret to you because you may not have actually heard that before. But that's how you make real money. You eat somebody else's fucking lunch. So we want to prepare because people do spend money, a lot of money during down markets. That's how you get ahead. Um, and we want you guys to be the ones thriving in those areas. Okay. So hashtag live, hashtag replay. Um, but what's interesting is going from 2010, when you started your own business, flipping into a digital marketing agency, it's a whirlwind total difference of like how much skepticism there could be, how much commoditized services may be out there. Because like with PPE, it's like, Here's some quality masks. They're real. They're from a real supplier. There's verifications. There's all these different chains of command. I mean, the only thing you have to avoid is like multiple middlemen. When it comes to websites, it's like, well, GoDaddy's giving me a free one from website tonight. Wix is giving me a free one to put their little banner across the bottom. And who gives a f That's like people's mentality, right? So, so going into this space, especially Facebook ads, even marketing people, SEO people. Well, guess what? People think those $15 or free widgets are the things that we do, but then they forget that what well, what do people say about quality, right? Like you pay for you pay what for what you get, or you get what you pay for. Um, and people learn that the wrong way, and they're so enticed to say, I'm gonna buy that dollar McDonald's hamburger and compare it to a $20 salad that's gonna make my life last a lot longer and get in better shape, right? So it's kind of, you get what you pay for on one end, on the dollar end, you're probably gonna get a heart attack or, or have some sort of like health or digestive problems if you do it every single day versus a salad and working out, it's gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna have a little bit more fluidity to it. So that's kind of like the difference of what we teach and what we share. Um, and, and when you first started out, Ron, Correct me if I'm wrong. Like you were doing, I know you were doing WordPress websites, but then when you started coming into the GSD and, and your first move was like, was it going to be a full digital marketing agency targeted on real estate or, or what was like the first starting point that you started with us? Well, my problem is I really had no clue where to start. Um, I mean, I, do I have a few realtor friends? Yeah. Do I understand the business outside of me, myself buying a home? Mm -hmm. Not really. I mean, I don't know what they go through, uh, you know, so, but with, uh, with your recommendation, I think I chose the real estate niche. Uh, I learned how to do Facebook ads, um, at least do it the right way. Um, and I would say that I was proficient at it, not a hundred percent confident, but I know with, with Cody's support and with the other people in the group that are always crazy helpful. Um, you know, I, I was confident enough that it, it was a service that I could sell for sure. Yeah. I mean, when you said the group is, is supportive, I was actually surprised how supportive, because when you build a program, like we built, like, you don't, you expect like us to be the leaders and us to do everything and us to be responsible for everybody. Um, but what happened was like, you guys are hopping on calls, but the Wolfpack idea was brilliant that Cody came yeah. up with is like, connect everybody together, interconnect them, make it a family vibe. And, and the rising tide truly lifts all boats because I've seen it in other groups that I've personally been in where, where people are really competitive. It's like, they don't want to share a secret or they don't want you, they want your client, even though they're trying to help you get a client. So it's kind of like Zillow with real estate. They'll, they'll sell realtors marketing, but they also want the listing themselves. Right. So it's kind of like that weird vibe. But I love the GSD fam. Cause it's just like such help, like chat zooms all that shit um Same but even way. cody like yeah i mean even leading on fucking ads like, i mean cody just does the shit for you it doesn't get easier than that it's almost like i was watching this russell peters stand-up comedy and he does this little scene where he's like um i'm closing my eyes take it and go take it and go it's like with ads it's like hey show up to the call cody will do the do, will, will help guide you the the goal is obviously not doing everything for you it's to ultimately say hey can you fish on your own so at midnight on sunday if there's a fire you can fix it um, that's the overall goal, but let's dive into some juice. Like, let's talk about like, we'll back into the backstory of how we got there, but I want to give people the fire. People want to know about how do I even come across? How do I comprehend? How do I even like price or even have the thought process to even say the words 55,000, right? Um, to, to a client when, when traditionally people may be used to saying two grand and thinking, I hope they don't think that's too expensive before they even said the number. Um, so so let's talk about that deal because I know it wasn't peaches and cream and we'll tell you the backstory, but keep in mind, less than a year ago or just about a year ago, this man started a digital marketing agency coming from what I consider personally a very traditional, very niche type of market. Very niche. Like this is wildly different when you're used to oh, dealing totally. with CEO. 
When you're used to dealing with CEOs, marketing chief executive officers, and billion dollar companies to now dealing with us common folk that are very budget and value conscious, right? Well, especially realtors. That's the one thing I've learned. I mean, realtors, not a lot of rich yeah. realtors out there. Not a lot. I mean, there's going to be a small percentage of them, maybe like 10% make money. The other 90% are just bottom feeders. No offense if you're one of those watching. It is what it is. Facts are facts. It'll just make you get better. Um, but the reality is let's walk through, like, t t take me through, like, how did you, first of all, get in touch with this particular client? Well, he, I, I knew this guy um, and, you know, we, we were friends, probably speak to him a couple times a year. Um, and that's the one thing that I think that is one of my biggest strengths is networking. Yep. Um, you know, we, we all do it on, you know, through the way that you guys taught us on Facebook and Messenger and stuff like that. But I, between everybody that I've known personally and the hundreds and hundreds of people that I met in the PPE business, I probably know 150 plus people that are, that own their own businesses. So I've been reaching out to them as a whole, uh, somewhat consistently. Um, and next thing you know, he replies back, he goes, yeah, I need a website. We started with a different, he owns multiple companies. We started with uh, one website. He loved the job. Quick, Hold on. I want to, I want to stop you for a second for everybody out there. Look, look at what Ron's doing. He's using like his, is building his pipeline on social, building the perfect stranger method out, which if you don't know what that is, drop a PSM in the, in the chat, we'll tag you in that training. It's free for you, by the way, to get clients. Um, but look at what he built out. He has 150 people that he already knew that own businesses does anybody know what that's called in the audience? If you guys can drop, what is it when you build like your first set of like the people you want to talk to? There's a word for it. It starts with the word dream. Um, so I just want to see what you guys know in the comments there. So we want to get some participation. Oh, shit. I didn't even see there was uh, comments already there. All right. Well, I'll welcome everybody. What's up, Pratesh? We've got Tom. We got January. We got, oh, Cody's in the audience. Oh, look at Cody. We got Val Valentin. We got Caitlin Young. Dano. Dano. I love seeing your name pop up a lot, man. Um, who else? Luis, welcome, brother. Maria, we got Brian. Whoa, it's been a while, Brian. Hope all is well, man. Um, and we got Paul, and there we go. Pratish got it right. The Dream 100. That is so fucking important. It's so important. Like behind me to my this way, so that's my right. There's a whiteboard. On that whiteboard has a list of names. It's on that fucking whiteboard for a reason because those are the people we're going to get in touch with. We're going to do some collaboration or some business together. So I love the fact that you brought that up. So your phone book, low hanging everybody, fruit. Low low hanging low. fruit. It, yeah. Exactly. And, and if you believe in this, you're completely wrong. And I hope by the end of this, you'll change your mindset on this. The person who said never do business with friends and family, those people will never love that person. <laughs> so, so that's a fact. My best fucking customers do not ask for discounts. They do not bitch. They do not fucking cry. They know reality and they pay on time and oftentimes in full. So that is one thing that I love that you said, because then I can use my profile on Facebook. I went to the, to a restaurant the other day, a police officer who I've known for about 20 years the guy's like, dude, I've been digging all your videos, man. Like, I wish I owned a business. So people are paying attention. They're just not par participating in your content. They are fucking, I hadn't seen him do in many years. And he yeah. knows exactly who I am and what I do that he can actually think of me if he's talking to another business owner. So that's, that, there's my spiel. Uh, but let's keep, too. yeah, because like, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of this and I think all you need is 10 key customers, right? Like, like, I don't know how many people are on a basketball team, like maybe 11. So we'll go with 11 for this example. So if you have 11 key customers, I don't care what they're paying you on an average two grand a month to make it a little bit respectable. So we have $22,000 per month on just 11 people. If you keep just 11 people happy, you communicate with them, you give them what they want, you solve their pains, you solve their problems. And I don't mean like work 20 hours a, a, a day on one customer and do that every day and rinse and repeat. I mean, streamline the fucking thing. Make sure you have the skill to do the fulfillment or buy the skill from somebody else. That's really important. But once you have that core 11, um, 
you can live the rest of your fucking life if you want to live a digital nomad or a cool lifestyle, own a home, take buy a, a used boat and chill on on the water a couple of days a week because you're going to get fucking referrals. You're going to get five star reviews. You're going to have intimacy and you are not going to end with just two grand a month. You'll end your life cycle with them at five thousand dollars a month because you're going to solve more problems. Yeah. So that same 11. I'm not a good mathematician, but does anybody know what 11? Don't answer the question. Ron. Uh, does anybody in the audience know what 11? times 5,000 is, if you had 11 customers paying you $5,000 per month, what would that number be? A lot of money. Yeah. Does anybody know the math for me? Because I don't have a calculator right here and I'm just getting used to how to use the math. Thanks. Um, so anybody write that number in the chat, but but that's a lot of money, right? So it actually leads up to the theme of this of how Ron closed the $55,000 contract because I do know math in my head. <laughs> it's pretty basic stuff. So so you met this guy through your phone book. You've kept in touch. You used follow-up processes. Um, now let's get into the juice. So he, you're talking to him. He owns these businesses. How did you kind of navigate and come up with the scope of the work where you can actually be confident to say, here is what I'm going to recommend to you. Well, first he hired me to do the, the initial website. And then when it was done, he called me up. He goes, listen, I just want to let you know, I absolutely love the website. I love your vision. I love the color scheme. I love, he goes, there's absolutely nothing I don't like about it. Well, I'm starting these two other businesses and I want your help on everything. He goes, SEO, website design, uh, maybe social media, and, and more and more. And uh, I think I'm even working my way into possibly being, uh, to some extent, a part-time employee that, so I get paid for some of the other stuff that I do for him too. That's so fucking cool because like, I did that for a good friend of mine where I was doing services and it was contract based. So it was X dollars per month for X thing to be done. But then they wanted my time. But when I, when I was doing the services, I had a team doing it. So it's like, here are the people doing it, communicate with them. I only want to know of good things and bad things, preferably just the bad things. The good things we're supposed to do. The bad things is what I want to solve for you. So I like problems versus like, because the way my brain thinks is you're supposed to do the things good anyways. So the pat on the back is above and beyond, not just for the basic necessities, but I want to find the gap so we can solve problems for other people, but also the existing client. But yeah, there's nothing better than getting that additional consulting because then part of it was like, because of the communication, because of the project manager, because of like your authority and how I, I have authority when I talk to clients or, or project manage them. Um, it led to a little bit over 10K per month just on consulting, but I didn't have the time to do it, but I liked that dollar amount. I liked the 10K per month. So I didn't make it about hours. I made it about problems. So rather than saying you're going to get whatever, whatever hours you get, 10 hours a week, that's a lot of fucking time in a month. That's like a huge, huge, I mean, I mean, people don't spend that much time with their fucking children in a month. I don't want to spend that much time doing work for one person per month. So it's based on when you need me, I answer the phone. So it was a unique way to, to get a project where sometimes one answer solved a hundred thousand dollar problem or the 10 grand was like, fuck we would have been going on and on and on with this for month, many months, many quarters, many years, just losing money. So that's another way you can use your existing customers to add more value, to give them ideas that they never thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And, and can I tell you everything from coming up with uh, grand opening ideas and mapping it out for them. I mean, when I, I took an hour and I spent the time and, wrote all the TV and radio and newspaper contact information and came up with uh, an email marketing campaign idea. Uh, you know, and did I bill him for it? Absolutely. Uh, why? Cause it took me time and uh, it, he didn't even blink at it. And he goes, this is brilliant. I love this plan and we're definitely going to run with it. Uh, I want you to head it up uh, in the sense he wants me to delegate the tasks to some of his employees and, uh, you know, and just, you know, do the follow up on it. Well, yeah, I mean, you just added something so powerful for him. Number one, the marketing that he knows he needs that he knows his team is not capable of doing, or he doesn't know they're capable because he doesn't even want to manage them himself because he's busy. So you're going to add a lot of like pow and like power behind it because it's almost like you're, you, you got like in these situations, I would always position myself really, really well with the employees and really, really well with the owner because I didn't want one side of the 
park or one side of the the team like the team thing like oh they just love ron he's gonna get me fired and then on the other side it could be opposite right so we want to we got to align ourselves really really well so we're always like the good guys in the scenario so those are fun ways to have um especially when you get like employee buy-in um uh it, it's nothing like that uh because then you just have like the two r's which are the results and then based on what you've told me your recommendations he has such a deep relationship which is the other r results in relationship once you get the result and you don't have to actually have like a monetary result you can have an activity result mm -hmm. like progress result like a website there's no money being made while it's being built it's cost out the door fucking wasting money as far as somebody else may be thinking but when you have it as an asset a digital asset that is going to attract your expensive paying clients versus pushing them to your clients there's a lot of value behind that yeah and, and listen you know one of the reasons why i'm in the position with this project is he trusts me and you know and it comes across on every call and yeah you know and I, one that makes me feel good you know knowing knowing that and you know, the fact that he knows that I'm going to do a good job for him. No, like how, how, if I can relate it back to like what you've learned from us, like how has that helped you like kind of lead up and have even the confidence to kind of be able to approach a deal of this size? Well, first of all, if without talking to you more in depth about pricing and things like that, I wouldn't have charged them half, if not even less than that of what I did charge. Uh, you know, I mean, I was charging my early clients, you know, four, five, six hundred dollars for a basic website, and that those prices are tripled now. Um, you know, and to start with, and his primary website is going to be, you know, 20 to 25 pages plus landing pages for each different division. So it was a much bigger project, and uh, obviously, he paid much higher than that. Yeah, no, I mean, that's huge. I mean, three Xing something that you would have done for less than half. That's, that's, that, that, how does that make you feel? How's that helped you? Oh, it was huge. You know, and, yeah. and you know, my, my cost on, on his, on the big website, you know, is uh, a sixth of what I'm charging him. Yeah. <laughs> like that's pretty fucking cool. Right. Yeah, I mean, who sure. needs salespeople when you can just close big monsters like that? <laughs> you yeah. don't have to manage and train people all the time. That's pretty fucking cool. Well, go first. I'm proud of you to do that. That's amazing. Um, and then we're going to help you get more of those because once we get into that pool, we want to get more, but don't fall away from where your normal clients are because we've had those in the oh, past where we've had, yeah, we've had those, those, those kind of like outliers where we don't call them unicorns just yet because we, we know they exist. Um, but, but yeah, we've had the, the hundred thousand plus websites and you may be thinking, well, who the fuck would pay for a hundred thousand dollars for a website? People who have pretty big goals. Like, I mean, you, the value you bring and the authority you bring and the conversation relationship, they're buying that a lot of the time, mm -hmm. um, a majority of the time. Because even when when I was talking to one of my buddies in San Diego just last week, we just, Cody and I just bought um, uh, his, his company, a part of his company that he built up for a couple of years. And uh, when we we're sitting down for breakfast, he's like, do you want to talk about the GSD and the business? So not really. Well, let's just, we'll just chill. Let's have some breakfast, brother. And then at the end of it, I'm like, yeah, the way we're going to do this is 90% of our relationship is going to be friendly. The other 10% will be business because we want our relationship to be so fucking rock solid because we're not thinking we're not, we're not stepping over dollars to pick up a dime. We're stepping over those fucking dimes to pick up dollars. So we're thinking a year, two years, five years down the fucking road. And then we have to go into the micro of, what are the activities that I need to work my balls off? And I mean, fucking all in, not like this, this uh, like digital nomad type shit, because we're taking it really serious. We want to make a lot of money and then we're going to fuck off. Right. So we want to make a shit ton of money. And then we're going to spend like, I, I mean, this year I've probably spent three months on vacation and, and you may think that's the fucking off, but I mean, I have my phone so I can still respond, but, but we want more, we want more free time, more money, more free time. Mo have, money, have, have fun time. we'll travel yeah no totally um so so for people in the audience like you you didn't start that way when you started with us like what were kind of those game changers that kind of shifted your mindset or helped you in the beginning for somebody else out there that's either looking for help or just starting their agency or heck a lot of people have an agency for fucking two years one year six months ten years and are still extremely stuck in their ways and have like a vicious cycle of ups and downs. Like what was oh. the beginning stages for you? 
the, the, I would say the one thing that really helped to turn it around uh, was bringing in a VA. Um, she took a lot of pressure off me from constant posting and, and doing the stranger method. Uh, so th that was a big piece of it. Um, I took about the first six months in the program of just being a sponge and learning. Um, I, I very, very rarely ever missed one of the calls. Um, yeah. Sometimes I participate, sometimes I don't, but you know, I just, I mean, I always, you know, I have a little note of something during your call yesterday, uh, you know, that if you're not sure what to charge them, ask them what's fair. I, I thought that was brilliant enough to the point to where I wrote it down. And, you know, because some of those big, big customers, if you don't know, that's fine. It, they'll tell you. And who knows, it might surprise you what they're willing to pay. Um, yeah. I mean, so, we have to have that conversation anyways, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I thought that was a, a brilliant idea. And, and it's little tidbits like that. And I have a hundred of them that, that I've written down and, you know, a hundred of yours and Cody's favorite sayings that, you know, I, I have a, a word document that I've been running with, you know, slowly adding to over the time. So that and the confidence that I get in learning a little bit more, like today I had a call with, with a realtor. Um, he's only been doing it for three months. He's an EXP guy. By the end of the call, he understood. He's like, I, I get it. I got to spend money to make money because I totally understand that. And he was using a, the generic ESP, EXP website. Um, and he's like, I think I'd like to start with you doing social media. Um, and then once we get that thing going, then maybe I'll bring in a website and then you know, so, I mean, we had a great call and hopefully we'll you know, close them on Monday. Um, Dude, that's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, with, with certain industries, especially real estate, because I have a lot of experience in that category as well. I love the foot in the door to establish trust. To me, I think trust means when you're talking to a stranger and you know they need help, they know they need help and there's a barrier to entry and it could be money. It could be also a little bit of trust. I like having a down sell and a foot in the door and it doesn't matter the dollar amount. It honestly yeah. doesn't. It just matters can you fulfill and still make a profit is the first and foremost. Um, but I think trust only can exchange hands when money exchanges hands. That's the only way it can actually create a business relationship that you can build a foundation upon. Because if if what one one mentor taught me this like very early on, so I was lucky to actually um, hear this early on. It's a very big cliche. I hear a lot of like people who say this should not be saying it because they're a spitting image of the person. Um, but it's like you're you like it's a mirror. It's a law of attraction. You're going to attract who you are. So if you're going to be fucking cheap, guess what? You're going to attract cheap ass people. If you're a dick, you're going to attract dickheads. So it's just a fact. Look at the people around you. Look at the people around dicks. They're all like whenever I see arrogant fucks, there's other arrogant fucks with them. Um, there's rarely like a, a, an outlier in a lot of groups on a very regular basis. So, so I kind of lived by that. Like I'm going to attract exactly who I am because I want that environment around me. If I spend money, I'll attract other people who spend money. If I make money, I'm going to attract other people who make money. And it just creates that energy um, and that environment. So that's kind of advice that I think everybody should probably take a little bit more serious. And it doesn't mean like go buy stuff recklessly, but it means take fucking risks because the only person you're betting on is not the person coaching you. The real bet is you, right? Listen, th th this week, I agree. And, you know, I... I what do you mean this week? week? Is it ever? Is it well, just this no. week? You agree? <laughs> no, la last week I had a, a company proposal designed, you know, professionally designed. This week I'm having uh, some a flyer, you know, like a like a four by nine flyer that I'll be able to hand. Yeah, out I remember you telling me about that. And then uh, I'm also redesigning my website right now. So just across the board, you know, okay. investments into the company and you know. It, I listen, you get, you have to invest if you want to make for sure. And it's yeah. all about that image. And I want, I want to have an image of my company that I'm not this one or two person company. I want to, you know, have a staff of a hundred, at least in the, my potential client size. Yeah, no, that's, that's huge. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you want to create that brand expectation on the internet. So it's not a concern throughout your conversation. So it's an investment you got to make. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody wants to look like a million bucks um, and that's perfectly fine. Now I want to ask you a different question, like, and, and it won't offend me if you don't say my name, but it, it may offend me. I'm not sure. Um, what's been like your favorite calls of, of the GST that's been most valuable for you? Like today, today's Ron, not starting Ron, today's Ron. Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Uh, uh, role play. Is that call with, by the way? Sales, sales and role play. <laughs> All right, you did say uh, my name. Now let's yeah, back yeah. up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, 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 go ahead. What were you the reason why I like it is because your concepts sometimes are something that I've never come across. Um, the way that you turn the no's into the yeses. You know, I, I've never had to do that in most of the sales presentations that I've made before. So, and it takes a long time to really fully understand. And I mean, you have years and years and years of experience running with with your tactics mm-hmm. uh, that, you know, every, like I said, each call, if I can pick up one or two lines that that'll make me that much better then I'm golden. Yeah. And and the unique part is it's, it's a cadence on the call and we all know like tonality and timing is really key and important. Um, But yeah, those one liners can sometimes be the whole difference between a call going to shit and a call reframing it back on track. And a one liner could be a question. It could be an analogy. It could be a story. It could be a hook. There's all these different things. And that's why Ron said it takes a little while to understand the concepts but if you do it in bits and chunks and then go execute, it'll be the fastest way to implement. Because there's been times where we've had people that have been on one call. They, I mean, it was Tejas. I'll just say his name, Tejas. He's done this twice, uh, where he got off the call, called a couple of clients, came back two hours later and said, I just made $4,000 recurring monthly. Not 4000 one time, not luck, not anything else, fucking recurring. And then I remember on one call specifically, he's like, I got to try that idea. He called another client, closed it, and he had still time to come back on the coaching call. I'm like, holy fucking shit. That, that's, it's, sometimes it's pretty powerful. Sometimes it's quick, but the variable is the action. And, and Ron's been taking some serious fucking action because it's like when you're, when you're starting at ground zero, you do need to have some level of sponginess to it parlayed with as much action as you're confident to take. My job is to... Yeah. And my job, I remember I used to consult for a consulting company called Incito, and I didn't know what that fucking word even meant. And I didn't bother to Google. I just figured it's some sort of weird acronym. And, uh, and then I asked them, I was doing a video project for them. And I just said, Hey, what is that? What, 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 what's Incito to you? And, uh, he's like, it means to inspire. And that's what we want to do is inspire as many people to take the things that take the action they need to take and realize that not taking those actions also has a consequence too, because we have an end goal. We have a destiny we want to get to, but if we don't start where we're not going to reach that destiny or it's going to make much, much longer and create a turbulent ride. We don't want to have, yeah. um, but it, but it is a confidence thing. Totally get it. Right? And, and, you know, part of that confidence is before every single call, I really try to prepare myself. I mean, I'm, you know, like today with the, with the call that I had, I 10 minutes before I hopped on his, on his uh, messenger, I read all, reread all the notes. I hopped on his profile, on his Instagram, on his link tree, and I knew everything that I wanted to talk to, uh, talk about with him. And you know, he told me, you know, I let him tell me what what struggles he has, and then I said, well, here's my thoughts and ideas, and you know, I gave him some piece of advices, you know, a couple different things that uh, that he totally understood. And, and, uh, you know, I said, listen, I can help you with that. I can make your job easier and build your brand. And, uh, and he loved it. No, that's, that's absolutely a beaut. I love that because like our, our approach is, is, I mean, it's sales, but it's also like really consulting at the same exact time, because we don't want a customer to think we're after their, their bank account. We want the customer to think that we can solve their actual problem and show them that there's also a couple options. Number one, doing it the way you've been doing it um, or guessing around and, and using hard work and guesswork rather than a framework. What would that result in? Would that lose you the same amount of money that you're currently losing month over month? Or would solving that with these methods that's going to be certain to do it be a better choice for you? Yeah. Like which one would be riskier in your opinion? And then they're going to pick your solution. And then you're going to start to understand why they like your solution and, and how they benefit from it and why 
timing seems to be right. And then you go over the normal types of objections. If they even come up like the partner, the executives, the boardroom or whatever, however big you're talking to. Sometimes it could be just, yeah, it could be the wife. Yeah. I mean, or it could be nobody. I mean, there's times where I've used this in the past where I didn't want to make a decision. I'm like, yeah, let me run it by my partner, the phantom partner, right? It doesn't exist. Um, So that's when we get the skills to be able to break those, that way of thinking because procrastination is the enemy of success. It slows growth. Uh, Think of how many times you've made, not you personally, but you guys in the audience, even you, even me, right? Where we have not made the decision and then we wished we'd made it earlier. For some of you, that's 10 fucking years, 20, 30, 40 years. Some people won't even be none the wiser and they're going to die and have the regrets on the deathbed. I wish I operated 80 years of life differently because I always look at two things. There's two, two things that we, we, we love a lot, our money and then our time. And I'm not going to include family and health and all that stuff, but when it comes to business, it's typically a money and a time thing. And what are you going to value more if all things are equal right now? Like, would you rather spend a lot of time or leverage your money? Because to me, money's printed, money can be burned, money can be lost, and then it's worth zero. But time, when today this live is over, I don't get this hour back, neither do you, does, neither does anybody watching. I can always get money back. I can never get the time back. So I always value my time really high. Um, and the, the sooner you anybody out there that doesn't understand the concept, the sooner that makes sense and that lands, the more money you're actually going to make. Because I'm a big fan of buy the solution and do the work rather than figure out the solution. Because if the wheel exists, why the fuck am I going to make another one? But that's what a lot of people do in the digital marketing world. That's what a lot of people do in dental world or any world. They guess their way through fucking life. And then fuck a blink of an eye. If you're 20 years old out there watching, you're going to be 25. And hopefully you remember this. You know, it's interesting. It's back in 2010 when I left my old company and started my own. One of the biggest reasons why was because at the old company, I was working till nine plus o'clock at night. And uh, sometimes later, I was always the very last person that to leave that office out of 350 plus people. Um, but the downside of that was I never saw my kids. You know, I'd see right. them and they were young. So my focus shifted by with the advantage of owning my own business to where I can now be a coach for many, many years. And I coached them in multiple sports. And I love that. I, it's yeah. something that I didn't have from my dad. And, right. uh, you know, now I have that much more special of a relationship with my kids, which is the number one thing to me more than yeah, 100%. Than, yeah. Like how, how many people out there? I know that there's some of you guys watching. If you're here still hashtag replay hashtag live, but how many people want more free time? I mean, what, what do you, and, and also what do you value more? Like you value your time or your money, both. That's totally fine. Everybody has their own personal decisions. Uh, because at the end of the day, like I'm looking at it this way, be it like things sometimes just permutate into opportunity. And like with me, for example, and, and what, what I'm going to guide Ron to, and you can hear the future of what I'm going to recommend maybe in a year or so um, for you specifically. But like when I ran an agency, I didn't want to be a fucking coach. I don't want to teach anybody. I just want to make money doing my own thing and, and not really be around other agency owners. I'm like, why would I? But then it started to become a community. And then from competitor to community, then I understood that my competitor's trash is my treasure. So I embraced it, said, hey, Ron, you run a website agency. Do you ever have clients that request SEO? Could we partner up on those deals? Let me show you what I got. I'll give you a little kicker if you need one to sweeten the deal to get that referral and vice versa. If I got websites, I don't want to do them. I'll give them to you. So we just embrace that whole agency world that our competitors are our allies. We're going to be buddies. We're going to share secrets. We're going to share information. Then it became to the point where it's like, well, hey, how do I do this? So then I started getting the how questions from everybody. Like, how do you get a public company when you dress like shit and you wear flip flops every day, <laughs> like that was an uh, maybe that's a master class in the future. But uh, but but I like to be comfortable. I don't like to wear a suit. That's why I quit my first job. Is those were not not why, but part of the reason I wore a suit every day. Um, but but I started getting all these how things. Then I started giving advice. Then they started thanking me. Then everything permutated and led up to Cody and I meeting. And then we started the GST. So all I'm saying is, a lot of you guys have potential. But we're not, we got to expose it and maximize it. And then once we maximize them, we get really good at something. 
Like think about a basketball player. There's a guy named Dennis Rodman out there. And all he was really good at was like irking appointments, getting in their head a little bit. That was step number one. Then he was really good at rebounding. Then he was like really good at like shutting down pretty good players. So he became a specialist in one category. His stat sheet may not be impressive except for the one sheet rebounds, but he was really, really good at it. So once you're really, really good at one aspect of what you do, then you can probably teach it later in life. I don't want you to be thinking, I learned this a week ago and I got lucky and three clients and I can now go teach it. We have to have consistency. Like for me, it was probably 15 years before we started doing like GSD stuff, maybe 16. So 16 years of doing the same thing every single day, 16 years straight. And then we decided we're good enough to be able to earn the stripe of a credential of teachers, right? So we didn't we didn't just jump out there and throw a, a masterclass blindly. It was through like a different kind of vantage point um, that we feel is replicatable, but also most importantly, long-term, not, not a fly-by-night bullshit um, because we came from a different era pre Facebook. <laughs> so, so, so we're taking, we're, we're taking the old, but tasty and adapting it to the new and young. Um, so there's some power to it. Um, kind of listening to an old tape of like Earl Nightingale or even some of those old school uh, Jim Rohn videos. We're kind of adapting the old and the new together and blending them as the new model of agency. Um, so anyways, like what, what do you, what, what's been like, something some advice you'd give people about the gsd and what it's done and where, what what some, somebody do if they're they wanted they're, they're they have an agency they're having trouble scaling it they just started it um give them some advice here ron well um first watch as many modules watch as many classes uh definitely bring in a va uh make sure the va understands every day what the job has to have, you know, what, what their job is. Um, and then start reaching out to your circle of influence, reach out to everybody that you're networked with, um, friends and family, offers, spiffs, uh, referral awards. Uh, you know, uh, one thing that you mentioned uh, during our last call was to market to other agencies that are not focused on what services that, that I'm promoting to, um, you know, something like, uh, if, if they don't want to do website design or SEO, guess what? I'm more than happy to do it. And, you know, and I have no problems paying a commission on that. Uh, yeah. And, and honestly, just that strategy alone, the partnership, if you go inside our guides tab, I don't know what it is. It could be guide number one, but you'll find it. It's basically how to turn your competitors into or turn from cold caller to closing your competitors. leads. I forgot the name of the module. I think it's module number one inside of this group that you guys are watching. This It's free. It's about 10 minutes. It's under 10 minutes. And it just maps out how we built the whole custom creators agency. It was, it was, des- it, it, it was part of it was luck. Part of it was strategy, but it was also a lot of fucking preparation. Um, so, so we always felt like we're never a fish out of water when we come across a bigger deal, because all our job is to is think instead of Apple's slogan, think different. We want to think bigger, right? Because I can close, like I used to close the $500 bullshit websites and guess what I made? Negative $200. Well, yippity do doth. Are you proud of me, mom and dad? I lost two fucking hundred dollars on that deal. Um, but then we have to learn from those things. We have to understand that $500 and $5,000, the one difference in that. Does anybody know what the one difference between $500 and $5,000 is when you're charging for it? A zero. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, the zero. Yeah, I guess I guess that's also a good answer. But the real answer is it's a vocabulary change. That's all yeah. it is. Because don't get in your own head, or you are dead. You do not make assumptions for the other party. If price is a different expectation than what the client expected, have a conversation around it, because there is something called negotiation. You can always negotiate the term of a deal if it makes sense for both parties to win. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the whole idea behind any business transaction we ever do is always two parties have to win us and them. It has to be a collective because if one party wins, the other party doesn't guess who's going to feel fucked over the losing party. It's me versus you. It's we versus we, right? We're together because we want the long game. Um, And that's a big lesson that I want a lot of people to learn is like, don't burn bridges. Even if you get burned. Um, I met the, the founder of, Maybe I don't know if he bought the company, but I, I think he was the founder. His name is Jess Jeff Stibble. 
Kobe Bryant's partner before he passed away. Like think about that. Kobe Bryant's actual business partner that helped him produce deer basketball and all the other business ventures outside of the NBA. Um, hmm. They did a company called Stibble Bryant. When I was watching him speak at an event where I live, um, I walked up to him after um, and I was talking to him and, he, uh, and that he, he echoed the same thing that I, uh, that my, my dad actually echoed to me is don't burn bridges. But the number one thing is like, look, when I sold web.com, I could have completely destroyed them. I could have just taken all the money in the world, left them with a bag of shit if I wanted to, but I didn't, I negotiated in a win-win relationship, even though we could have got a bigger exit. The reason why he did it is because now they still do business with that same party, the long game. Sometimes you have to also look at the long game. You don't have to look yeah. at just the win, right? Um, yeah. Because that's what it's all about. Because we're going to be here for a little while, presumably. Hopefully, a lot of us live to 85, 90 if, if, if you like to. Um, but think about that for a second. Like where you are now, there's a lot, a long way ahead of us. And we can make a fuck ton of cash. We just need one thing, skills. Skills, skills, skills. Start to value your time a little bit more and be a little bit more um loose with your with your spending habits on getting knowledge because if you look at every successful person alex ramosi even going to the big boys like a warren buffett the number one thing even mark cuban you have to have the skills that's the first thing exhaust those suckers buy as much of those as possible then you can have staff then you can buy the outside beneficiary things like real estate and nice expensive cars if that's your thing um but the first thing and first most is take care of yourself before you can take care of others. And that's what I want to end you guys with. Hey, Ron, any, any thoughts for somebody who's on the fence about wanting to join the GSD? What do you tell them? It's worth every single dollar. I couldn't emphasize the knowledge and the confidence that you guys put into my head. And, and I see it every day in everybody in the group and uh, even the newbies that, you know, they're, they're sponges right now. And, and why it's because the stuff that you guys give us is really very high quality. And uh, I couldn't be happier. I really truly can. Awesome, brother. Well, thank you for sharing your story with us. And for yeah. those of you guys that are out there, I mean, take action on whatever it is you do. If you want to reach out to us, we do not bite. The only thing we really bite is food. So don't you worry your little hearts or your little hands. Um, we'll walk you through where you may be stuck because you got this one life to live. Don't fuck it up. Take advantage of it. Take that action now versus later because what's a week going to do for you? You'll just be one week behind the eight ball. 20, 30, 50, 1,000 new competitors will crop up in those seven days. So if you do need help, reach out to us. We're happy to help. If we're a good fit, we're a good fit. If we're not, we'll guide you in the right direction so we can lead you up to being a good fit if we're even able to help. So don't feel shy. Reach out. Love to talk with you guys. Um, you can DM me privately if you need to or just comment below and we'll reach out. All right, Ron, have a great day. I'm going to see yes. you actually in, fuck, in one hour <laughs> yes. for our call. One hour and 10 minutes. All right, brother, thanks for joining us today. Thanks. Great talk. Yes, D. <laughs> Bye. All, all day. All day, baby. Bye-bye.